So welcome to my first ever restoration of a typewriter. So what I have here is an Olivetti Lettera 25, which I bought it for I think around 200. That will be around $50 I think for Americans. Um, I'm from Malaysia so this machine I got it for 200 which is perhaps around between 35 to 50 dollars even though it seems like too much for average american market but for us malaysians here this is quite a deal actually so i'm i feel like i'm pretty lucky to get this machine for 200 ringgit um this is a very basic model i think you you can't do much here you have a preset um indentation here So that's your only tap you can do. I'm not sure how to adjust this and I tried looking at the manual. It wasn't prescribed there, how to change it. So this is fixed I think. I believe this is the the carriage escape lever but I don't think it works this way. Um, but when I first inspect the machine from the bottom, there's a connection at the, at the lower part of it. This is some rubber band piece which I tied to the lever. This lever is not connected to anything. And when I pushed it upwards, you know, from this angle, if I push it upwards, the carriage is released and it moves freely. The thing is, it's not connected to anything. So I was very disappointed to see that this is not included as the features of the machine. So what I did, I did some DIY thing. I don't think this is like proper for a typewriter for this. Um, I just tied a rubber band with some connect connected to some wire, some cheap wire I got. This is semi stiff wire I think, and there's uh, there's an empty hole at this side, an empty hole which leads to nothing. Uh, there's even the single slit which has no lever or button. Um, I think for this um, this empty slot here because they use the same chassis for different models so I think um, since this is um, Letera 25 I think the, the other model like Letera 32 or 31 I think this slot will be utilized by another button so I think that button is for the carriage release um, I'm not sure why they don't put it at the first place. You know, I can't do much here. So when when I connected with the rubber band and the wire here, so here, when it go when the wire goes out through this slit, I made a loop and it's jutted out from the keyboard like here. So when I want to release the carriage, I just pull it. It's a bit um, it's a bit, how do I say? It's a bit aggressive of a movement but you have to put your hand on the carriage when you pull this is a naked olivetti letra 25 the chassis is already screwed out and i will going to scuff it out and repaint it this is the original color greenish beige um i believe this machine comes from 1975 so i think that's their that's uh, their color scheme i wish to paint this into a um a light pink so it has that late 60s vibe or early 70s vibe um, i'm a very pink person <laughs> so let me show you the keyboard layout here this is a very basic um earlier version kind of layout there's no number one here it starts with number two and this is the margin release um so it ends until zero and for number one you will you will use the minuscule l for it and then i think this is for english language uh, it is this is made for english english language users it has um, dollar sign and pound sign and then the fractions on it so i think it is for the english market the letters are all basic um i think the the keys are chunky if you see the earlier models or different models like later 22, later 32, 35, they would have a thinner key. This is pretty thick, but it moves pretty well. You can see when I got it, um, 
it is still operable um, nothing stuck but when I first got it um, some of the keys are sticky especially uh, V and uh, W and F they were very sticky if I type it really hard push it very heavy and very snappy and it will move but when I deliberately touch it you know without focusing on my energy it will start at some point the first thing i did was try to clean it here in the basket area perhaps you can't see this is the basket area i clean it off with some brush um, because when i first receive it i have no idea how to clean it so when i finish re uh, researching for uh, typewriter cleaning it is suggested that I use methylated spirits instead of WD-40. Um, methylated spirits is something that I have never used uh, before because um, prior to typewriters, I collect um, vintage sewing machines. So on that, I use uh, WD-40 extensively to clean the insides. But for this, this is something very new and I have to use methylated spirits. And I managed to find it online. Um, but I think the logic behind methylated spirits is um, is acceptable because this basket area that I'm trying to clean is very small, it's very um, narrow and if you use WD-40, it will dry and gum up just like oil. Um, but if you use methylated spirits, um, it will dry up faster and it will leave no residue like um, I think uh, water residue so it won't rust I mean I think that's the priority if you use denatured alcohol you will have some water left in it that might change into rust if you use WD-40 it will gum up with the oil and if you use it too much it will attract dust and those will continue to accumulate um, into gunk so so far all the linkage on this works fine the keys are pretty pretty dirty at first because I think the the previous owner never clean it. Um, so this is the original um, ribbon spool, but it is plastic. I'm not sure if this model comes with the metal spools. Um, I think this is cotton ribbon, and there are ribs. Um, it's damaged with, but this is what I could type. There are still remnants of ink in it, so. I believe it's a very good quality kind of ribbon it can still type with some faint red ink but the the black one is totally finished the ink is totally gone this is a very basic model you have ribbon color change here the lever stencil for white red ink the blue or black ink position unfortunately uh, the, the most um, my most favorite feature for a typewriter is the touch control this model there's no lever for it I can't change the, the, the tension I put on the key so what I hate to do on this typewriter is I have to press the key very hard in order to make you know, a good impression on the paper so I'm a I'm a quite moderately paced typer um, sometimes I missed some of the keys when I type. Mm, I found my rhythm when typing on the keyboard. It felt very good for as a first timer on a typewriter. It felt very good, but when you receive a machine without a touch control, it will hinder your movements, and you will end up with um, stuck keys. You know, when you try to change alternate keys, it will jam. So, if you are watching this and you are thinking about getting a typewriter. You can get um, typewriters that have touch control and it will help you especially if you are trying to type on it for the first time I think this one is fine with me i think i can work with it i'm going to save up for a new model this is my, this is my first machine and i think it won't be the last so it has a very short um, carriage written lever and it's plastic unfortunately um, this is the line spacer you have zero um, you can move the paper freely, single spacing, um, double and triple. This is unique to my machine actually, but I'm going to share with you. Um, usually, when I try to load my paper, I will push the carriage first to the, to the left margin, and then I will unload my paper there. But when I do this, 
I followed the instruction and the suggestion that you load two pieces of paper together when you are trying to type on a hard platen so that it will reduce the noise a bit. Um, I think that's, lo that's a logical move to do. But when I unload the paper here, it will only reach here. It will not pass the ribbon area. Why does this happen? Is this something wrong? Is my platen head um, very limited tension? So when I push it, when I change it, when I release it to, to this side, let's see if I put it this side, I will load my paper without going to the, to the left margin first. So I will load my paper first and my paper load successfully without any obstacle and i just realized that this um i'm not sure i think this is a card holder but it doesn't do a good job um this hinders my paper from going forward so i think unique to this machine i should unload the paper first before going to the left margin so i think that's for now um, I've shown you the machine, I've shown you some mods which I did and um, I think I will show you next how I clean the basket. This is methylated spirit solution which I got it from online. It's 95% V dash V slash V so I'm not sure what that means. Um, I hope this works but because this is actually alcohol so I think it, it will work. So I have some cotton buds here or Q-tips. So I'm going to use this and clean the basket here and the face type so for the face type um, you will need some rack and then press all your keys and then insert your rack in between and the, the padding here and the keys so that they will rest on the on the rack so whatever whatever you wash on your key slots will fall on the rack not on the bottom of the machine um, since this machine is bottomless, so it will drop on another rack for me. So let's try to put the rack underneath the key slugs first. Um, what will help you too in this uh, cleaning the slug is that find like a fine wire brush or, or stiff brush so you can brush off. Since the ink imprint will stay on the key and that will smudge your new imprint. So let's try first. Um, and clean the basket. It looks pretty clear for now. So I'm going to change to a brush. This is not a good brush, this is just a rough paint brush but I think the bristles are pretty hard so they will go through the channel. So. As you can see, my uh, initially my brush is grey now it's lightly greyish pink and you can see that prior to this restoration I practiced typing using the red section of the ink ribbon so you can see that the ink is rubbing off the slugs onto this brush this is a bamboo skewer I took off from Sati and it has this quite fine point I think I could use to pick out any ink deposits on the letters. Yeah, see? You can see at the tip of my skewer is black. So yeah, it's black. So definitely we are touching some black ink deposit. And it's clear. So keep on doing for the next 25 letters.
so I finally cleaned all the insides and the basket for this typewriter and then the type slugs are finally clean right now I'm going to show you how it types is the ribbon cover for the typewriter so what I'm trying to do now is to what do we call it mm, to scuff out um, the surface of this plastic cover so that my repainting process will adhere um, better when I spray paint it after this <clears throat> this is you can see this is the original um, the original surface and this is the the scuffed one I just did just now so you can see that this is a bit lighter than this one because the protective layer is already out I'm currently using this I think this is called the scotch bright pads this is the same that you use to um, in washing the dishes you know scrubbing your pots and pans um, I think this works very nicely to rub off the protective layer of the plastic cover so I will do this for all the casing the body casing and the top cover and to the sides of this typewriter let me show you a bit this one oops this one so this is it so all of the surfaces will be scrubbed using this. I have two pads for now. I think that will that will do. And the front cover, the plate of the front cover, accidentally um came off. You know, mm, I think I had a good luck on that because if not, I I would cover this with um painter's tape so that when I paint when I spray paint it, it won't be affected by it. So. Let me try a bit on this so you can see. I think the lighting in my room is a bit um, too bright so you can't see the difference in this process but if you do it on your, from, on your own you will see the, the difference. So give this a try. When you do this, you can feel the difference before and after. The after feels a bit smoother and there's a white residue on your finger and on the pad. Uh, that is the protective layer of the plastic. So I've just finished um, sanding or scuffing off the surface of the casing. Um, you should put more focus on the outside, the exterior, because this is what you see and you want your paint to adhere better here rather than inside, I think. Prior to this scuffing process, I already put some... This is my effort of dampening the sound of the, the, sound of the typewriter. I put some batting. I think that might help. It's not that thick but it is still something soft so maybe it can absorb some of the sound i did this first i'm going to scuff this and then now i am going to prepare for the spray painting area
this is how I set up um, to paint the, the carriage sides so there's a lot of taping I hope we are secure and I'm right now on the clear coating stage this goes the carriage level hello so this is the result of uh, repainting for the side piece so this is detachable only if you are very familiar with the um how they assemble the model but like what i have right now i don't feel like detaching it so what i do is just um, cover other parts which are not to be painted with newspaper and i will paint this just like this but there are drawbacks of this kind of method because after the result is you will get um, uneven edges things like that but um, since this is for my personal collection not for sale I think it's okay right now I'm trying to open this from this side I wish you can see it I hope this is visible for you all right now this is the plate knob which is supposed to be left black so let's see how it looks like now if it's affected by the repainting task I have to be very careful here since I've already um, put the clear coat on top there's no fear for the tip to stick up to the painted surface there is some re residues of the paint inside the knot but I think it looks okay for now and I'm satisfied with it I'm going to clean the, the key types now so um, for this it's a bit unconventional but I'm going to use um, WD-40 actually but in, in my country this is in this form it's, a, it's called D-Rust uh, from Get Soon, I think um, and this one is I think is equivalent to WD-40 maybe a bit milder so I'm going to use this and dab it on a piece of tissue which I made into this triangular shape it's like the ones you see on the hotel tables I think um, fold it like this and then dab with some of the solution of the Dura solution and then clean the side of the of the keys and the W is getting slow so something is wrong with it and I will do a second time cleaning after this just um, for the final time so I just put on um, a fresh new ink ribbon and two pieces of A4 paper here excuse that and this is how the new ink performs um, this new ink ribbon is nylon it's not cotton the one that came with the machine originally is cotton you should see that this is very satisfying so right now I'm just typing testing the ink without the chassis of the, the, the machine so I think we'll wait until the casing dries and I'll attach 
all over again and we'll have another typing test. I've let this um, this painted casing um, cured for one whole day. I um, I took around I think almost 12 hours in total of doing this project from scratch to now. Um, I think this case had some layers which I think around perhaps six or seven layers or I mean seven coats of paint so but um, as you can see from the video um, I ran into some problems um, after repainting I see this there are painting faux pas which I committed um, on this project you can see that the colors are uneven here there are two possibilities whether i um, painted certain areas with different dis distances when it comes the, to the distance between my spray paint and the project itself and it's either um, the paint or the clear coating so you can see on certain sections of this casing um, there are some orange tint here and there uh, which looks rather weird um, but uh, this is my first time repainting a typewriter so let's just take this as in um, a peachy pink sunset concept so <laughs> that's how I justify it now I just wanted to shift and finish this um, project um, quickly um, some of the clear coat uh, the, uh, some of the clear coat has dried dried out and but some some of the areas felt a bit uh, grainy because um, the spray paint itself and um, some of it are still sticky even though it's quite dry now quite hardened first I will dust this especially the nooks and crevices the insides of the casing because when you spray paint things um, there will be dust from the paint itself depositing deposited um, in the in the areas where it doesn't receive so much of the paint coverage I think um, the most visible area won't have so much dust is, is the insides actually Hello So this is what I've done just now which I have attached the chassis again to the typewriter and this is the final result I'm not sure whether the lighting is doing the justice for this um, I thing. I still get my pink ty uh, typewriter for now. I will live with it. Um, now it's usable and if you see my the previous um, video section before, I told you that I have padded the bottom of the machine. Now I think it types a bit quieter than before just by um, padding the bottom of the typewriter. And this is from the side I'm glad it's already pink now it's not drab and yeah and thankfully nothing is stuck yep just some dirt accidentally just now and I even scratch accidentally the plate is very very fragile and if, if you take this off you have to really guard it with your life or else it will end up like this the paint has thinned out a lot
that's it from me and if you watch this thank you so much um i might do another post like this in the future so if you if you like it you can subscribe to my channel thank you